Okay, I got it. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> I had tech support standing by. Now Nathan's disappeared. <laughs> he's like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His work here is done. I didn't believe him when he said it would be really easy to join the live feed, but it was. Yeah. I think, well, there's 300 people in here already. Oh, really? Guys. Oh. I mean, that is the beauty of quarantine, right? We've got a captive audience, literally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, <clears throat> like, when I when we talked about this, this was, like, the best thing I could think of to do for now since we all can't be together. So oh, if yeah, we do something like this. Absolutely. I, I've, I've been thinking over the last couple of days what, what quality content can I provide over the next couple of days, and really I've got nothing. So I'm glad that you thought of this for me. Because, <laughs> oh, is, is this guy trying to get on my back? Here we go. He See, wants, he's going to do the whole thing for me. I he wants I to be involved. To be I think my pooches are going to do. I think my pooches are going to do that for me. Look at this. <laughs> oh, just waiting it. for Bruno to get up there as well. Usually he gets jealous if um if Bowie gets all of the attention. Hang on, we'll get Bruno into the mix. Hello. Yes. Hey, everybody. Oh, look at this. See, this I know is Bowie's going to try to get closer to you because he yeah, doesn't like this. This is the content right that we all came on Instagram for. Look at this guy. They don't give a shit about what's going on in the world right now. They are so happy that there's extra laps at home yeah. all the time. Can you, guys, can you guys see this? I've got one dog on the lap <laughs> and one up on the shoulder. Right, you got there, buddy. Penny is the same way. She's loving that I'm home right now because I'm normally not. So... She's taking all of the walks and all of the loves and laps. Oh, yeah. It. Oh, yeah. The dogs know where it's at. They're opportunists. But, um, <clears throat> no, I think, I think you got a lot of questions. There's questions coming in now. And then yes. I know something we wanted to talk about on here, obviously, is just how we're all getting through this and, and um, how difficult it is and scary and, uh, you know, the uncertainty of everything in the future is, is yeah. weighing on us. It makes me um, grateful in a way that we're living in a time where we have social media so everybody can connect in a way and we can pass on information and help each other out and support each other because I feel like when, when this, this kind of thing happened in the past, certainly during wartime and, and even back so far as swine flu, that kind of thing, we didn't really have this support system that we have now. So it's um, I think it's one of the... One of the reasons that social media, while social media can be tricky and sometimes invasive and um, it can be a, a tri tricky ground to navigate, it can be so useful and, and helpful in, in times like this. So I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful that you suggested we do this because this, this is a fun way for me to spend my Sunday too. I've got my tea brewing. You just <laughs> missed out on me eating Vegemite toast. I did just have some Vegemite toast. But, um, oh, man. I tried that when I was out there. What did you think? Definitely not an American thing. Uh... Yeah. Did you do the Tom Hanks spread or did you do the Australian spread? Because we don't use that much in Australia. Oh, I, I tried it straight up. <laughs> okay. I just well, that's, that's I was just like I need to I need to like taste it and see what it tastes like and I was oh, like no. oh, oh bitter bitter yeah it's like it's like salty stock paste but you got yeah. a piece of toast with lots of butter and then a little bit of Vegemite and then it's like delicious I guess you have to be raised on it <laughs> sure yeah I don't know it was it was interesting it looked like chocolate but it wasn't chocolate no, it's like the opposite flavor of chocolate. <laughs> the antithesis of chocolate. Has anybody out there watching tried Vegemite that isn't from Australia? It divides people in Australia too. There's, there's either Vegemite lovers or Vegemite uh, haters. And, and yeah, I'm very much a lover. I wonder what they say. There's okay. on set, actually, we have a new snack. They're, they're called Shapes and they're basically like little savory biscuits or savory crackers. And there's a Vegemite flavor, and it's, yeah, mm. really good. People are saying they tried it. Scrape yeah. of Vegemite with butter. Yes, got to have butter. My friend doesn't, a friend of mine, Alicia, doesn't do dairy, and so she has it straight up on toast, and I just feel like just just jump off a cliff. But what, like, what, what is the <laughs> point of living if you can't have butter with your Vegemite? Um, 
Okay, I'm gonna. So guys, we, um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we did put up a question form in our story. So you guys can ask questions. And then we'll also take some live questions on here. Uh, and we'll hang out for the next 20 minutes or so and just ask questions and see what's going on outside of everybody being locked up in their houses. I hope that everyone out there is safe and healthy and, and not going to stir crazy with isolation. I'm not sure what it's like in America, but in Australia over the last week, it's been, um, things have really, really, really ramped up in terms of what we're doing in regards to security. Uh, I know most of our borders have completely closed, so it's almost impossible to get into the country and very difficult to get out of the country. Um, and that's kind of like the extreme measures that, that we're at right now to try and stem the growth of this. So I don't know what kind of information you guys are getting outside of Australia, but certainly the, um, the information that we're getting in Australia is that wherever you possibly can just to stay away from people and stay home, obviously, you know, there are people that still have to go to their jobs and, uh, you've got to go to the shops to get groceries and things like that. But um, the overwhelming advice from medical profession professionals in Australia is just to stay home and don't mix with people if if at all possible. So that's what I'm yeah. doing. But I'm also an introvert, so this is like my idea. Of it. My friends are <laughs> friends are inviting me places, and I'm like, no, the government is saying no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, heaven. it's the same here. Um, I think we're a couple of weeks ahead of you guys in terms of the spread. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, obviously we have more States than you do there. Um, there's a lot of every day, every governor and every state, you know, official is going live and talking about what they're doing to help um, stop the spread. And um, I know I'm in Pennsylvania right now and uh, they basically shut down all businesses that are not life sustaining. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of people out of jobs, um, myself included, obviously, because I can't do marketing uh, if there's no businesses to market to. So um, it's scary. It's scary times. And we all we're just kind of doing the same thing, self-isolating. And uh, myself, I'm an extrovert, obviously. So it's it's hard. And, and I'm sure there's other people in my position where you're kind of going a little crazy. And like you said, luckily, we have technology and we can talk to each other and and do things like this where we can talk to the fans and um, help each try. other get through it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's hard alone. It really is. Especially when you're used to interaction, you're used to going out and doing things and stuff like that. Um, yeah. 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 But and we don't know when it's going to end. No, that's true. But I think if we can all collectively take a hit and, and bunker down now, that's, from from at least the information we're getting here, that's the best way to um, to nip it in the bud and and sort of stop the spread, and then hopefully we can all get back to living our lives sooner rather than later. Yeah, for sure. And we can get back to making Wentworth for you guys. Yeah, we, yeah, we got that news. We know that you guys stopped production, and yeah, I think it that's a smart the, idea. Was, yeah, it's it's the right thing to do. I mean, obviously no one on the set wanted to stop. Um, no one wants to, I don't think anybody in the world right now wants to stop their jobs, but yeah. uh, this is one of those once in a lifetime uh, moments in history where you realize that actually there's something far more important than my job. There's something far more important than a TV show. Um, it's, it's the health of everybody. And uh, yeah, if that means sacrificing time at work or sacrificing some entertainment, then so be it. It's for the greater good, I think. For sure. Um, okay. Can you see the questions that you got asked on the bottom? Oh, yeah, I can, I mean, I can see, oh, can see someone says their toddler is very un unhappy that the, the dogs aren't in frame. I'm sorry. One dog, <laughs> is, um, one dog is under the table. He's hiding. Kay can see the chat. She can see the show. Bowie will most likely be on my lap the entire time because he's a mummy's boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I can see the questions that are coming through. Oh, a registered <clears throat> nurse just commented to stay home. I didn't catch your name, sorry, but yeah, good advice from a registered nurse. Um, yeah. we, had, we had a nurse on the set of Wentworth too, and that was her advice too. 
And thank you guys, all the nurses and all the first responders and uh, everybody who still has to work through this because they're busy making sure that we can still survive. And oh yeah, and not retail just workers, grocery stores, hospitals. That's right. Truckers. And not just not just having to work, but being literally confronted with the virus and having to treat it because that's that's your job. It's um, yeah, I have the utmost respect for you guys. So. I've got a whole bunch of questions. Um, so do I. I wonder if I can. Hey, look, here's a fun one. Do you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, favorite American candy. Oh, my God. There's just, there's so, so many. I lived in, for those of you who might not know, I lived in um, Los Angeles for almost three years and I got completely addicted to your food and snacks over there. Uh, my favorite candy, oh, Reese's Pieces or do you guys say Reese's Pieces? We do. Yeah, we do. Okay, so I love the Reese's Cups. Reese's so peanut, cups. peanut butter. Yeah. Also in the same in the same vein, I love peanut butter M and M's. Yes. And mine is M and M's. Cheetos and cheddar jalapeno Cheetos as well. So all the snacks. All the snacks. Nathan, are you watching? <laughs> I think Nathan's watching from the other room. I can hear myself talking. Yeah, I have Amanda's upstairs with um, Danielle and the boys. You remember the boys from Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, they're upstairs right now. They're watching too. Oh, but I, I, I left them guys. up there. Hello, guys. They were so amazing at Wentworth Con. They were so um, they were so helpful. Yeah, they're our runners. They like to, you know, run and get snacks and coffee and. Oh, well, I'm always happy to accept coffee and snacks. So they were valuable members of the team that day. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, this is a good one. Hold on. What about that one? Oh, Advice for people who are struggling with anxiety and self-confidence. Oh, God. I wish I, wish I had a, a, a helpful answer to this, but I don't know. I, I'm not someone who struggles with anxiety, and I know that anxiety, it's not just... I know that it's a real thing. It's, it's, it's like a mental health issue and, and I'm sure that there are far greater. Um, there's a lot that we don't know about anxiety if it's clinical or if it's just social anxiety. So I feel I wouldn't feel right about giving advice because I truly don't know what, um, what the right advice would be to someone who's struggling with mental health issues. But um I think I think it's scary always... right now, right? Because I feel like people with anxiety right now, <clears throat> I know a couple of people who struggle with it too. And with everything that's going on and how serious it is, it, it becomes an issue that people need to talk about, I think. For sure. And I think that that's why social networking can be incredibly helpful. Um, but also, contrarily, I think that social media and social networking can actually be quite a large source of uh, anxiety and um, self-confidence for people. So I guess my, my very, my very uneducated advice would be to just try and find people that you feel you have a connection with, you feel safe around and you feel that you can confide in and just take notice of, of people and situations that make you feel good and, and people and situations that don't make you feel good and lean into the scenarios that make you feel good and lean away from the scenarios that don't. Like, for example, I never had social media growing up going to high school, but if I did, I think that, that it would be a really scary world to live in to know that you can you know, that everyone in your school can comment on you, what you're wearing, what mm -hmm. you're doing. So for me, that would be, uh, that would be a, a scenario that I wouldn't want to be a part of. And even though I do have a social media presence with Instagram, it, it's the only social media that I do have. And, and even then I try to only use it for work. Um, and positivity. And, and, and kindness. Positivity. Yeah. Um, because that's what we ultimately need more of. And especially, I think that's highlighted, especially, you know, in times like now. So for sure. it's, it's probably not great advice for whoever answered that question, but 
I, I would say that if, if it's a real, real issue, I would always advocate getting professional help. Like we're, we're so lucky that you, there is therapy or social work uh, counselling available to pretty much anybody that has internet access. You can get online and find someone that you can talk to and who, who is um, qualified to, to help you through those situations. I'm a big advocate of therapy. I, I get it and I recommend it for everybody. So that there's that. For sure. Let me see here. Let's do some more questions. That's yeah. Someone one. else said they're glad they grew up before they had social media. Yeah, me too. Oh, everyone's asking me to say crikey. <laughs> crikey. Is that what you think Australians say all the time? I think maybe just Alf from home and away says crikey, but here we go. Uh, crikey. Crocodile Dundee is what my mother was telling me. Oh, is that what it is? Crikey from Crocodile Dundee, yeah. Oh, I guess right. that's what they associate with Australia. He's a, he's an icon. Let's see. What's on there? Uh, is Allie the character you auditioned for? Yes, she is. Uh, I When Wentworth started uh, in 2012, I think, the setup director, Kev, um, called me up and he said, look, I'm doing this new show and there's all these characters and would you, would you consider auditioning for it? And I love Kev. He's, he's been the constant director on the show forever and he, he, I've worked with him on and off for the last 15 years. My dog's just coughing up a hairball there. And uh, he asked if I would consider auditioning for the show uh, and I would have loved to except I had just gotten my American visa and uh, I really, really wanted to pursue finding work in America. Uh, so I, I was unable to audition uh, at the beginning of the series, but I think it was for the best because the cast are phenomenal and, and he chose that cast perfectly. And I'm very glad that I came in when I did to play Ali. I think that she's been um, a really surprisingly complex and interesting character to play so i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad i came in when i did yeah that was a question too people asked um how you felt coming in a little later in the series uh great actually really really great uh because the show was established i knew exactly the tone and style of show that i was going into um so i kind of had a, a head start in where to pitch the character and and I kind of knew because I I had seen the first three seasons I sort of had a bit of a heads up in terms of how I felt that Ali should be pitched to fit in with the characters that were already existing um because you know you had so many iconic characters already in that show and uh I I was in the very fortunate position that I Oh, my dogs are probably going to start barking any second, just FYI. Um, <laughs> someone's heard something at the door. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm glad that I came in in season four. Uh, I think that I, f I feel like I came in just as Wentworth was riding that first wave of big change because, as you guys know, who've been watching it from the start, Wentworth has gone through so many changes and... Um, and, I, yeah, I feel great that I was able to come in at the time that uh, I still was able to be a part of Wentworth OG but also be a part of of the whole new wave of characters and new storylines. Yeah. Someone says, do you talk to any of the Wentworth cast outside of filming? Yes. In fact, yes, my, phone is, my phone is blowing up at the moment because we've all got a, a joint WhatsApp feed. And we're all, like you guys, we're all supporting each other during this crazy, unprecedented and unknown time. So, yeah, we do. I mean, we have to, we have to live in each other's pockets at, at work um, and we have to do a lot of um, outside work functions together anyway. But they're the nicest, most fun, level-headed, kind bunch of people I'm lucky to count them as my colleagues and as my friends. So, yeah, we definitely all catch up outside of work too. It's difficult because um, 
obviously like a lot of people live in different parts of the country. Robbie and David and other cast members in the past have lived in New Zealand. So yeah, it's, it's hard because you come together on a show and you work so closely with each other and you form such a close bond and then you don't work with each other anymore. So you don't, you're not seeing each other as much, but yeah, you kind of, you can't unbreak that bond that you have when you've worked with someone that intimately. So yeah, I, I think they'll, I'll, I'll be lucky if I can count them all as friends for the rest of my life. You become a big family. Yeah, for sure. Someone says, if you could play any character besides Allie, who would it be? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, God, it's a really hard one to answer because everybody in the show has played their characters so brilliantly that I, I would feel embarrassed even attempting to imagine what I would be like playing one of those other characters. I um, I think if I if I had to cast myself in one of the different roles, in a different role, I think I could probably, I'd be most suited to playing Vera. Mm. Atco is so brilliant though. I, it's like, it's no contest, but I think, I feel like, I feel like I could play Vera well. Um, obviously I would love to play the freak just to play someone that sinister, but I would never in a million years get cast as that character. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one, maybe uh, one of my favorite, favorite all time characters is Bridget. And I just, I loved how Libby played that character so much. It was, she was such Indeed. a unique energy on that show. So calm and so reasonable and rational and soothing. And I really loved her energy in that show amongst all of the chaos of the other characters. Uh, there's no way that I could play Bridget as well as Libby could, but I really, I really loved that character too. Yeah. She was amazing in LA. Um, and very, like you said, very calm and soothing. And it was, it was interesting to see Bridget, the character and Libby, the person and, and are they, how are they kind of uh, different and similar. Yeah. Cause yeah. as you know, I mean, we learned in New Jersey that Katrina and Boomer are so very different. And Pam and the Freak, obviously, too. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was a nice energy, and it was very calm, and she was very zen, and yeah. Yeah, I know. I rate her. I think she's brilliant. What are people saying on here? Let me see. What's your choice of drink? Someone said that? Join the Marissa movement. What's the Marissa movement? I'm in. Where's the petition? I'll sign it. <laughs> what is your choice of drink drink real and b i don't know what that's is that like your alcoholic drink or real and b i don't know what real and b means but my drink of choice well non-alcoholic would be tea or water of which i have a glass of each <laughs> um but alcoholic i i guess red wine depends if it's summer beer red wine Gin yes, we are taking live video questions. Somebody just asked that. Does Ali miss... Someone asked if Ali misses B. Yes. I think Ali misses B every single day. Of course. Somebody said, how is it like working with Danielle? Uh, I feel like I've answered this question in, in pretty much every Q&A I've ever done, but it's brilliant. If, if any of you guys have had the pleasure of meeting Dan, you'll know that she's so fun and embracing and, and interesting. She has really interesting ideas and things to say and she's fun to work with and she's so creative and collaborative. I, I loved working with her and I miss working with her too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to whenever it may happen when the next Wentworth con that we can do together, I'm looking forward to that because that's, that's really the only opportunity that I get to work with her these days, sadly. Yeah. Marathon. We're going to get them going as soon as we can. I know, you know, I've gotten a lot of questions too about uh, if Melbourne's going and if Jersey's happening. And um, my answer is really it's going to happen when it happens. I'm not quite sure. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's just one of those things that you can't. What you want versus what is right are two different things. And we all want we all want to be able to go back to our regular lives as soon as possible. But 
the health and safety of of our citizens is the most important thing and especially for an event like Wentworth Con where it's all about interaction you guys, talking with you guys and interacting and and you know you guys getting photos with us and it's just impossible it's just an impossible thing to do right now um for yeah. everybody's health um so we'll yeah we'll do it when we can do it yeah well that's why so we pushed back obviously we po- postponed chicago and um it changes every day. So if we can get it going in June, great. If not, we'll push it back. We'll still make it happen. We obviously still want to come to Melbourne and still meet all the fans there. They've been waiting yeah. for us. So um, if it doesn't happen in June, it'll happen later this year as soon as it's safe to do so. Yeah. Let me see what other questions I have on here. I have a bunch on here. Someone asked if I'd be their prom date. Absolutely. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to an American prom. I reckon that'd be really fun. American proms are I wore a tutu to my year 12 formal, which is like we call it a year 12 ball, but you guys would call it prom. I wore a tutu that my mum made. A tutu? Yeah. Was it a pink tutu? It was like iridescent pink and purple and glittery and sparkly. Ooh, I like that. And I was incredibly, I was incredibly comfortable. Check out that one. (laughs) <laughs> how was it to shoot the hostage episode and to finally kill someone Go i like that <laughs> i love how much <laughs> you guys endorse murder um, uh yeah it was um filming those scenes was really really hectic because uh we were we were in that laundry for um about Two days, three days straight, and um, the actors who were playing the um, the aggressors in that storyline, uh, Rick and Maine and um, I think it was David, those actors were astonishingly good. And, my God, when action was called, they really, really went for it. And even though we obviously we know that we're just making a TV show and we know that the guns being pointed at us are fake and the the blood is fake and and whatnot. It still was really harrowing and confronting. And um, we, we made sure that we were extra kind to each other during those days uh, because it was, it was full on. um, And we definitely felt that we needed a bit of extra support, but we have that at Wentworth. Everyone's so supportive. Our our bosses are really supportive too, the producers and the writers. They always make sure that we're okay and that if there's ever anything that we feel uncomfortable doing, they can they can help us with that. But yeah, it was it was really hectic. And um I'm glad that Ali Oh gosh, am I glad that Ali shot? Yeah, I am. I am. I mean, violence I feel like violence is never the answer and I I think that ultimately Ali being a murderer is <laughs> it's going to cause her even more mental stress and anguish. But in terms of character and in terms of plot, brilliant and, and certainly great to see Ali. Well, in the situation Ali was in, did she really have a choice? Yeah, someone, actually, someone else asked me the question whether she would get extra time for that, and I don't know. I think she could probably... I think she probably could claim self-defense on that one. But anyway, yeah, I agree with you. I think it was self-defense in the moment. But still, well, yeah. shooting, shooting someone in the head is going <laughs> to change you, I think, not speaking from experience, but I would imagine. Yeah. I think, I don't know if you really, if Allie really had a choice because of the situation and everybody being held hostage. So she was really self-defense for herself and for the others. Yeah. Yeah, what I really did enjoy was that I think Ali is the is the one character that no one would have suspected would have been the person to pull the trigger in that moment because she she during season 7 was at her probably her lowest point that we'd ever seen her it had just been like a systematic chopping down of her of her like mental health and her physical health and I think that she was at her lowest point psychologically and and didn't seem like she would have the strength or the backbone to be able to um save the day 
But that's yeah. what I love about Wentworth is just when you think you know a character and just when you think you might have given up on a character, the writers just turn it around and and they deliver something like that. So that it was definitely a thrill. It was definitely a thrill to do that. Yeah. That's another question we have in here too. Um, where does she go from there? Where do you yeah, think well, she goes from there? Well, I mean, I know because I've been, I've been filming it. But obviously I think that the writers put that in for a reason i think that ali could only really go she had two options she could either rise up and become a badass and make her predecessors proud of her or she could continue spiraling down um which also would be fun to play i actually really enjoyed playing Ali in that really kind of downward desperate spiral. That was really interesting. Uh, but it's not, it, you know, it's not interesting to see a character going down in the same direction for too long. So I love that the writers completely pulled her out of that. And now she's, she's suddenly a badass. And mm -hmm. I think that at the beginning of season eight, you're going to see a version of Ali that is incredibly changed from from that moment. Um, I mean, really, honestly, I think that Ali started changing the second that B died. Um, I, th I think that was the first brutal trauma that she experienced. And it just kept on getting more and more and more brutal and more of her family just dying around her. Um, but yeah, the, the end of season seven, that siege, I think is that it, it was almost like um, the turning point. Change. Yeah, a turning point for her. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Let me see. Let's take a look. I'm gonna take a live question here. Can I do that? There we go. Hey, if you weren't an actor, what job would you have? Do you think? Oh, man, that's a really, really good question. My mom always thought I would be a teacher, because um, apparently when I <laughs> apparently when I was younger and I was a dancer, I would I'd learn the dance steps faster than anyone else and then I would boss everybody around and like teach like tell them what to do and teach them the dance steps um and so she always thought that I had a, a natural kind of flair for instructing <laughs> um so and, and I do think I think that teaching is incredibly valuable and I have been fortunate enough to be able to teach acting and I love it I, I really love um passing on whatever information I might have or, um, yeah, any knowledge that I feel like people could benefit from, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy imparting that. But I really have no other skills in life, guys, so let's just keep our fingers crossed. That You'd be I, a calculus teacher. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely not. I was actually really good at maths. At, I was good at maths at high school because – it was the one subject that you could actually, you could learn a formula for and be right every time if you just knew the formula. Whereas things like English literature, um, it was- History, it was, yeah, memory. Yeah, history, like open to sub, sub, subjection. What's, what is the word I'm looking for? Anyway, you guys know what I mean. Like I was pretty good at maths as a kid and science, but uh, yeah, no, that's, I, no I longer, so. no longer. My brain's turned to mush. I've been an actor too long. Um, hey okay are there any hilarious moments on set that you'll never forget that's a good one. Oh gosh I mean I feel I, f I feel like just generally speaking I will I will always remember how light and fun we kept the set despite the subject matter that we were dealing with um I remember there was there was one particular day where Danielle, this was in season four, Danielle and I found a magazine and we thought that it would be hilarious to draw penises on all of all of the people that were in the magazine. So we found that incredibly hilarious to just go around to every every person in the magazine and draw penises on them. It's uh potentially revealing just how um childish we are but it, we found it hilarious no one else found it hilarious just us 
trying to see. There's a ton of questions on here, but some are spoilers. I don't know if I should. Is it safe to assume everybody's seen the end of season seven? I think so. I'm sorry, guys. If you're watching this and you haven't seen the end of season seven, don't know what to tell you. People die. <laughs> Someone wants to know how you feel without Tammy being on set. Oh, that was a hard one. It's really, it never, ever gets easy. The nature of the show, obviously, it's a prison. The truth of the reality of that world is that new people come into the prison all the time and people leave the prison all the time. So obviously the writers have to honour that and have to stay true to that. And as a as a result, we lose our cast members. Um, so it's tough and it's never fun because we do, we, we, you do become like a family on that show. Uh, and it's, it, yeah, it's never easy when someone's storyline comes to an end, but there was, some, there was something about Tammy's that everybody just felt so cut up about. Um, I think maybe it was something to do with the manner in which the character was killed and, and because Kaz had finally come to uh, like a, a moment of self-acceptance and she finally, Kaz loved herself um, in a way that we all always had hoped that they, that character would love herself. And then of course, that's the moment that you get, uh, that you get killed. But yeah, no, it was, it was really tough. We miss, we miss, all of the all of the fallen soldiers every day but yeah Tammy, yeah. For me especially tammy tammy's like my mum slash sister so i i miss her especially tammy was awesome in la too and it's funny because similar to what you're saying about the changing character a lot of the fans in la were uh you know, they started off with, oh, we hated Kaz when she first came on and then we started yeah, to yeah. love you and then this happened and now where do we go from here because now we're pissed off and it's, I guess, the oh, whole yeah. development of... Yeah, and, and yeah. they kind of want that. It's, it's funny because we, I think that the actors, the actor's wish for the character is very different from, I think, how the audience receives the character because... Personally, I know that we all have, as a cast have discussed this in depth, is that in a way you kind of want your character to be uh, – what's the word? It's like if you get a strong reaction either way, it's a win. Like if people are hating on your character, it's great. If people are loving on your character, it's great. If people don't trust your character, it's great. If people are disappointed in your character, it's great because it, it means that people are so invested in the story and the characters and what's happening that they, uh, yeah, that their emotions take over and they want, like, they want what's best for your character uh, and they get so emotionally attached. Like, I know so many people were so disapproving when Ali found happiness with Ruby, which I kind of understand, but it's, yeah, it's just one of those interesting things because obviously me as the, um, as the owner of that character, I felt that I felt she deserved happiness, but because you guys have all been a part of this, a part of this family too, everyone has a different, a, a different feeling. So what the audience how the audience responds versus how we feel about that response are, are two very different things. So we kind mm -hmm. of love it when you guys get angry. Sorry. <laughs> you like the reaction. And I think that's oh, what you're yeah. looking for. Yeah. The, the reaction. I mean, the worst thing in the world, the worst thing in the world would be no reaction at all. That's when, you know, you have just, you've yeah. lost the audience, but I'd rather, I'd rather people hate my character than not care. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think that's it's funny because Tammy said that too. She's like, I don't know how to feel about that because I hated Kaz in the beginning too. And then I started yeah. to like her again. So yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's the reaction that you guys want, whether it's hate or, or love or, you know, sadness or, and then once they get into the storyline, obviously they got more into the storyline of Kaz and her family and stuff like that. Yeah. That all and you have to, important. you have to play the, uh, from our perspective, at least you have to play the authenticity of, the character and what they're going through yeah. and someone like for example um pamela or susie who plays mari they like it, it's 
the death of drama if an actor wants to be liked because you 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 can't control whether people are going to like you or not you can only control how authentically you play your character and if pam or susie were worried about being liked then the characters wouldn't be as yeah. thrilling as they are because you have to lean into their villainy or their infamy that's my yeah. perspective anyway i agree with that for sure this is i think you answered this in jersey but i'm gonna pin it anyway hold on let me see there we go what was the hardest scene you had to film ah uh, yeah the I think shower I, was that the show yeah i think I've, oh gosh there are so many i mean all of the siege the siege scenes were incredibly hard um because they really were quite confronting and violent uh and the shower scene with Pam where I tried to hot shot her, that was difficult more logistically than anything else. I mean, it's always a thrill to be in your face acting with Pamela Ray because she's just a master. Um, but, yeah, that was more logistically tricky. It was I was cold and wet and in that shower, in that shower block for five hours or so and it was, it was just really hard, yeah. Oh, people are asking about rapping. Oh, me rapping? Yeah, look. Here, uh, you guys it. have all heard me sing Ice Ice sing Baby, that. so I won't do that again. I love King Kunta, but he uses a lot of bad words in that. <laughs> they might close it's our best, lives yeah. down if you do that one. Yeah. How does it start? I don't know. Let me see if I can get I'll see Nathan, can we get need that. your skills. Bring up the music. I think he's gone shopping like a good boy. Great <laughs> Let me see if I can bring up King Kunta. I'll, I'll stop when he says bad words. Okay. Here you go. I got a bone to pick. I don't want your monkey mouth motherfucker sitting in my throne again. I'm mad. He's mad. But I ain't stressed. True friends. One question. Bitch, where you when I was talking? <laughs> now I'm running game, got the whole world fucking king, cut to everybody want to cut the legs off him. Okay, I think I have to stop now because he's, he's about to say the C word or something like that. <laughs> but I do. Are you guys loving this? Because I'm loving this right now. This is the when most I, interaction and happiness I've seen in a week right now. When I first started dating Nathan, I told he's like, "Do you know any songs off like off by heart?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know King Kunta by Kendrick Lamar." And he's like, "There is no way." There is no way that you know every single word. And so I, I rapped the whole thing for him for four minutes. Like I did the whole thing and he was suitably impressed. So that's what sold you. You were like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he knew all the rap, like it was all the words to some wild Eminem rap. Oh, so Eminem. That, that yeah. is incredibly impressive. So yeah, we, we bonded over rap. Eminem's probably my favorite rapper. I have to say that. I did grow up in New yeah. York, so he was huge. So Ah, uh, he's the master. I, I look, I'm going to sound really old here, but I do like his old stuff better than his new stuff. I agree. I agree. I think he did do some new... I, I haven't even had a chance to... I know he just released a new album, and then he did do some crazy fast rap, and they were saying he would like the fastest rapper or something, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how the hell he'd ever be able to perform that live. Maybe we should do that. When we're con New Jersey. Well, so Someone says to get some Drake songs. I do. I know quite a lot. I know quite a number of Drake songs too. Okay, what Drake? Favorite Drake song? Uh, I'm with you, featuring Party Next Door. It's about us, girl. It's all about us, girl. Now we'll go. Work. Okay, I don't know it that well. <laughs> How's it going? It's all about us right now. Go where you go in that one. Oh, I love this song. And one dance. I think it's with Rihanna. Yeah. Oh no. Wait, he's is got it one, one with Rihanna or... that's really good too. But one dance is also really good. Oh, and somebody's like asking Blake. about Love Is Blind. Oh. I watched oh. that. Oh. I just. Has that was a mood. Love Is Blind, and if if not, please do. I mean, I. Part of me wants to really hate reality TV because it's kind of killing my industry. But Love is Blind is one of those shows that I really feel 
the producers just got it so right. They cast it so well. They, they managed to get the right mix of truly lovable characters, like your Laurens and your Camerons. Cameron. And then, uh, yeah, and then the... Um, Jessica's. The, the wild card that you just... Because see, every, am I right in thinking that everyone thought Amber was going to be the crazy one, right? But Messica turned out to be the crazy one. <laughs> Messica. <laughs> I think if you if you haven't started watching Love is Blind, please do, like she said. And every time you hear the the word, I guess every time you hear 24, or is that, is that how <laughs> Take a drink. Yeah, every time Messica talks about age. The role, yeah, her age. Also, yeah. this is an incredibly unkind assumption, but I feel like she was lying. It's talking about age. I feel like she was lying about her age. I think did that's you, why she was so picky about it. I don't think she's... Did you think old. she was older? Yes. Yeah, I thought so too. She looked a lot older. I mean, I'm 30. I, and she looked a lot older. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, look, I mean, that's not a very sisterly thing for me to say. But I, I wondered whether why she was so obsessed with the whole age thing was that she was actually perhaps not being quite so honest about her age. But maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, watch the show, guys. It's really, it'll improve your life.